Okay guys, this video is gonna go through two different ways or two different potentiometers that we can create for this task. So I've got two past videos I've already created and we're gonna then develop up two different strategies to be able to develop a dial and a knob for our potentiometers. So if we go over into our assembly, the first thing we're gonna have a look at is the sizes. So I'm going to use these as gospel, but I would encourage you guys to actually measure the ones that you have because they may be a little bit different in terms of the height of this, or there might be a little bit of an adjustment on what we need to do with these ones. But if we have a look, it's about seven for that little bit. I'm gonna go eight as my depth to be safe. And then if I select that face, to that face, we can see he's about six millimeters across. So I'm gonna be working on a six mil hole and eight millimeters for it to be able to slot onto the top of our potentiometer. All right, so let's get into it. So my first one, I'm going to start by going onto the, uh, the uh, let's go on the top plane for this one because we're gonna be drawing the sketch and extruding that one. So I'm gonna start there. And what we're going to do now is start with our circle. There's our six mil circle in the middle. I'm going to then add a second one over the top. He's gonna to be about 12. So there's my starting point. The next thing I'm gonna do is I'm gonna use a slot. There's other ways I could do this, uh, but I'm gonna use a slot to be able to do this. So I'm gonna start with a uh, construction line. So I hit Q to get that one out. I'm gonna make that 12 long. Right, so now I've got that, I can escape off, and I wanna be able to get to slot. So the slot is up here. If you can't find something and you're not sure, you can always search for, for it over here as well. So I'm gonna go slot and select that line. Now mine has already conveniently selected the size that I want, so you can see I've got my dimensions there for each of those. So if I wanted to have a look at what that would look a bit, a bit wider, I can. I'm pretty happy with being at five mil. So I'm going to finish my initial sketch there. So that looks good. I'm going to now shift E to extrude. So I'm gonna select the parts that I want to go up. Now in this case, I want it to actually be filled on the top. So I'm going to select that middle part. If you're happy with it hollow, you could leave it like that. But for this part, we're gonna close that off. Now I'm gonna go up 12 mils. So I've got a few mils above the top for, um, a little bit of bit of material there so i'm going to hit new for that happy days so i'm going to call this my uh, dial one when it gets busier it's always good to start sketching but these are going to keep pretty simple so we're not going to do too much now i don't like this i want to be able to smooth that off a little bit so i'm going to use a fillet so i select that edge and that edge so that they're both the same. And I'm gonna go up, let's have a look at what six looks like. So that smooths it off quite nicely. And I'm gonna tick on that. So there it is. So now it has given me a nice little curve on the edge, but I'm gonna do a little bit more to this. I think I'm gonna use a chamfer now to add it. A chamfer on the top edge and the bottom edge. I might 1.2, I think I'm probably happy with. That gives me enough detail through there to be able to nicely set that one up. Now, if I right click down here, I can edit the appearance. Let's make this guy a nice bright red. Okay, tick on that, he's finished. So I'm gonna bring him over into my assembly just to show you how we can actually mount it on here. So these guys have already been fixed. It doesn't normally like you having multiple things fixed, but for this, I just wanna keep them in, in the same place. So I'm gonna, use the revolute mate so it shows it's spinning on here once i insert that so i'm going to bring that dial in hit tick so now what i want to be able to do is when i go to the revolute mate it's going to look for the centers so i want to be able to try and get that center mark so see it hovers there i'm going to hold shift to be able to bring that across and click on that so you can see my first fastened connector is there ready to go. The next one I'm gonna use, Oh, and I haven't actually finished this because I, I need to go back and do that last part. So let's get back to our part studio. 
I need to get that hole in the bottom. So I'm going to turn that sketch back on and we're going to go and extrude, cut that one out. So remove him and we're going to go eight mils and make sure he's going the right direction. So now tick on that. I've got that there and I can hide that sketch again. So now I've got him in there ready to go. Now, if I wanted to make it a little bit easier to be able to 3D print, I'm going to add a chamfer in the middle. Now, we don't want this too big because otherwise it's going to impinge on the top of our, our um, potentiometer. So I'm just going to make that about 0.8 just to give it a little bit less of distance to be able to span through. So I should be able to print this without any support. So that one's good. Let's go back over to our assembly and try that mate again. So I'm going to pick the center of the inside piece of that, come back up here, hold shift over the top to be able to get him in place. So change, I don't want fastened, I want revolute in this case, because what that allows me to do is I can just move him around. So sometimes you want it fixed, but in this case, being a dial, I want to be able to show the movement of it. So he's good, ready to go. Now, next stage, we're gonna come over and do our second design. So I'm gonna do this starting on the front view. So start a sketch here, normal to that by typing N, and then hit P to hide all of those other sketches and faces. So now what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna start with a circle, but it's from the side. So that guy, we, we were working with eight as the cutout and three, because what we're gonna do with this one is we're actually gonna revolve this around. So that's gonna end up the cylinder that we cut away. Now over to a line and I'm gonna start building this out. So I'm just going to draw my shape as a starting point and I'm gonna add my dimensions by hitting D. So that one needs to go now three out and I wanna get this all locked in. So I'm gonna go another four out there. This one actually wants to be a little bit higher than that. We're gonna go up to 10, bring that up. This guy to there wants to be down to, let's go four. And then here to here, we're gonna go six. So now we've got our little sort of crown, tick on that one, and we're going to now revolve that one. So select the part that we wanna revolve, and then the axis for him to spin around. And we can see we've already got the hole in the bottom of that, so that's nice. So tick on that. But that leaving like that is a little bit boring, so we're gonna add a bit of detail to this. So I'm gonna add another sketch to this on that top, and I'm gonna go normal two on that. So now I'm gonna add some circles. So I'm gonna start by one circle here, I'm gonna make him two mils, then I'm gonna go again from the top here, and I'm gonna add a circle here, and I'm gonna make him four. So what I'd like to do now is I'm gonna dimension those so the distance from there to there is going to be, if I go to five, so he's out there, and then this guy to there is going to be 10. So that there is ready to go. What I'd like to do now is I'm gonna do a, a pattern of those instead of trying to write them again. So I'm gonna go circular pattern. It will probably show up under here if you haven't got it yet. And you need to now select the bits that you want. So there it goes. But what I wanna change now is I wanna change that from six and I can actually choose the number. So if I go to 12, I think that's gonna be a bit busy. Let's go back down to, let's go six. And, uh, maybe, uh, let's try eight. You can see it's sort of, I can see what the pattern looks like. I'm pretty happy with that one there. So I'm gonna click off that and I've got my pattern ready to go. So I can actually move those around. I wanna fix that on that center point. So now they're all locked in, they're black, that's good. Now I'm gonna add one more detail ready for the next step and I'm gonna bring a line to there and another line. If I click and drag on a line and bring him down, it won't let me do that again. So now the last thing I wanna do with that one is I'm gonna make that tangent. 
So that's this guy up here, which means that line and that line are gonna have a nice smooth transition. I'm gonna do that for each end of the line. So now I'm ready for the next step. So what I'm gonna do next is finish that sketch. I'm gonna add a, let's go fillet to this edge here, and I'm gonna make that three. So I've got that there, that looks good. I'm going to bring this next part down. So I'm going to go and extrude and remove each one of these. And notice they're showing red, so it's not happy with something at the moment. So what we're gonna add in here is actually the merge scope. So by clicking on that and part one, it's telling us what part we wanna remove that from. So I'm happy with how that looks and I'm gonna go tick. So the last detail I wanna add on is to kind of show where it's pointing, which is why I added this detail here. So what I'm gonna do is I'm going to now do another extrude, but this time I'm gonna select those pieces there. Oh, not there. Let's try that again. That one. And get those cheeky little parts there too. Okay, so that's now got that there, but what I wanna do actually is remove this. So I'm gonna to go to remove, and now it's jumped back the other way, but I don't want it to go all the way through because we're gonna then lose the details underneath, and we'll lose that part under there. So I'm gonna go down, let's say about four mil, and let's see where that takes us. I'm probably happy with that. So let's tick on that, four mils down. And now I can just add a little bit of embellishments to, to smooth this out. So I'm going to go back to my fillet and I'm gonna go much smaller. So I'm gonna go about 0.8 to be able to select on that face, on that face, on that face. Now I don't think it's gonna let me do this one. He's not happy with that unless, or if he's gonna let me do that one, no. So let's take that off. So this is where you kind of need to play a little bit. So I'm gonna start with that one. I might try one more fillet and see if he's gonna let me do that part now. So then that gives us a little bit better, better shape on that front edge. So I'm gonna tick on that one and I've got now a nice filleted space to be able to show where that dial is going. Hide that sketch too, and now I've got my another dial. I might actually add a chamfer just to make it a little bit nicer on that bottom there. 0.8 is good. Tick that one, and I am happy with that. So now I'm gonna bring that across into my assembly, insert him, there it is, tick on that, and I'm gonna use that Revolute Mate again. So this time though, I'm going to use the center of that base, so that little face there, and I'm gonna use the center of that base there. So there's multiple ways we can get those in, but you can see we've ended up with the same job there, which is nice. So those two there are ready to go. The last thing we're gonna do is I'm gonna show you how to export a body or a part to ready for 3D printing. So we can do that from here. If we go in and right click, oh, and they've, they're ones that I was playing with earlier. So let's remove those out. Remove him out and that's looking better. So if we right click on a part, it can be in the assembly or in the part studio and we go to export, it gives me the option of bringing this up. So what I wanna do is make sure I've selected STL is good for this and choose your meaningful name, name or your name somewhere on the file name is probably useful and then hit export. Now you'll need to do this for each of your dials. So we right click on that and we 
won't allow that. You need to actually get the part over here. So then we go export again and bring your parts out ready to be able to share across for 3D printing. So good luck guys for your 